Hey everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. Today is day nine of my 12 days of Christmas series. Um, today we're going to make two projects using the So Very Merry stamp set. This is an online exclusive. Fun fact, when it first came out, it sold out almost immediately and Stampin' Up! hadn't planned on uh, re replenishing the stock, but it was so popular that they did. And so now it's still available online. You won't find it in any catalog, but it is um, available in our online store. I'm using two other stamps today. We're gonna use the star image, like right here on at, from Stars at Night on our second project. And on the first project, we're using the big snow crystal um, background stamp as well. The full supply list is over on my blog and will be in a PDF that I'm working on that will be available at the end of my 12 days. All right, let's start with this beautiful card. Now this card is loosely based on a card I saw from one of our Artisan Design team members. I'm a little bit obsessed with the putting ink, colored ink on colored cardstock to make it um, a kind of a deeper, richer color. I've done that multiple times in recent weeks and we're gonna do that again today. There's a lot of embossing today, so I've actually done some of it ahead of time, okay? Um, for this card, it, we have two embossed things. I have embossed the snow crystal image in Versamark ink on a piece of balmy blue, and I embossed it with white embossing powder. And we're gonna add blueberry bushel ink all around it so that it's lighter in the middle, okay? So I'm gonna take my blueberry bushel ink pad and a blending brush. And I'm gonna, I always like to start over on the edge so we don't get any hard edges from our, our uh, blending brush. Sometimes when you set it down, you're gonna get kind of a bump and it doesn't look very good. So I like to start off on my um, grid paper. Now I'm kind of just going around the edges and uh, your embossed image is gonna resist the ink We'll wipe it off with a paper towel in a minute and you'll see that. And we just want it to kind of give us a focal point there in the middle, all right? And when you think you've gotten enough ink on there, you can stop, or when your arm tells you you've done <laughs> enough, you can stop as well. All right, so I've got a paper towel and I'm just gonna kind of work my way out and it's gonna remove that ink for the most part from my embossed image. See how that's coming off? Gives us a little bit of a lighter image than if you just leave the, the ink there. Now I wanted to add a little bit of snow, if you will. So I have taken my craft ink refill and put a little bit there on my silicone mat. And I'm just gonna take my um, water painter and add some water to it and then flick, okay? just. A little bit, I don't wanna go crazy. All right, we'll leave that there and we're gonna leave that to dry. Move that out of the way. Set this over here and let's color this beautiful image. And I have stamped it in Versamark on basic white and embossed it this time with gold embossing powder. And I've got real red and my cherry cobbler. Let me see, these two are the cherry cobbler and these two are the red and I'm just gonna use both of them um, to give us some variation. And I'm gonna start with real red, and I'm gonna, I'm using the bullet end of, bullet end tip of my stamp and Blend. This is the light, and I'm just gonna fill that in. And then I'm gonna take my dark, and I'm gonna flick some color just kind of down like that and then i'm going to flip over to the brush tip of my light and blend that towards the bottom as well all right so i'm just going to move through here looks like maybe i'll use my brush end each time seems to be a good way to flick that color and you're just kind of giving when you add in this dark you're just kind of giving it some variation, making it look like there's some sun coming through there at different angles. Let's do this one. Some of these are pretty small, so I'm not gonna worry too much about adding 
Whoa, too much color or too much shadow. But I do want to add a little bit. All right, we're also going to do his hat. And I'm going to leave one of them pretty light and then color the next one. Kind of, we'll have go from lighter to darker over here. All right, now let's do the same thing with Cherry Cobbler. And Cherry Cobbler is a lot darker. It's a little bit pinker than our real red. Okay, add in that dark. Oh gosh, I keep dropping that, don't I? The um, embossed raised edge really helps you stay in the lines. Okay. And add just a little more dark up here. Why don't I just do dark only? Let's see what that looks like. All right, now I'm gonna take my light cherry cobbler and fill both of these segments in. Be real careful not to get into your white, your white Santa hat, because we're gonna leave that white. And I'm gonna add dark to this top segment right there. All right, I think I'm good to go with the reds and the cherries. Let's see if I can get all of my lids back in the right place. That's the hard part. I always like to write a letter, the letter that it starts with on the end of my cap so that I know where it goes. And when I look at them in, when they're in my little storage unit, I can see exactly where they should, or which ones I want. All right, now for the other, the sky part above Santa, I'm gonna use Balmy Blue and Blueberry Bushel Stampin' Blends. And we're gonna do the same thing. All right, so I'm gonna start with my light and then I'm gonna take my dark and flick color outward and blend it out with my light. I think this blue color combination really makes the image pop. It's really good. Looks really good. All right, again with a dark, I'm gonna kind of angle it out so it's kind of going uphill like that. And then take my light again, blend all that out. Okay, we'll skip one segment and do one of these. And some more flick, 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 flick. I leave my markers open while I'm doing this so I don't have to keep going back and forth, opening and closing. All right, now we'll get blueberry bushel and we're gonna do the same thing. Now this one's pretty light, so I'm just gonna leave that. And blueberry bushel is a pretty dark color. You'll see when you start putting on the light, it is very dark. This is the largest section right here. I'm gonna try to be real careful. Now, if you have circle dies, you can use circle dies to cut this out. I'm also, I'm gonna use my two and three eighths inch circle punch. It fits the circle pretty well. Okay, now let's flick that color out. Now careful around Santa's face and his beard. And a little more flicking, flick, 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 flick. Out like that, I'm gonna kind of do it at an angle. Oh, I need my light still. And we'll blend that in like that. All right, I'm gonna use Petal Pink for his face. Color in with the light petal pink, adding a little bit down here for his hand as well. It looks like my blue is bleeding in a little bit. I was a little too reckless with my color, so be real careful when you go around their face. 
All right, now let's punch this out. And I realize it's not the two and three eighths, it's the two and a fourth circle that I'm using. There we go. Okay, let's bring back over our pieces and start putting this together. Here is our snow crystal. I have cut out a bunch of um, garden green branches from the uh, Joy of Christmas or Joy to You dies. I have them listed on the supply list. All right, we're gonna put those there. We want this ornament to look like he's hanging from a branch. All right, so I've used liquid glue. We might need a little bit more. And ideally, I would give that a few minutes to dry. But since we have the video, we're not gonna give it a few minutes to dry. We're just gonna go for it. All right, I'm gonna punch a hole right in the top. And I'm gonna take my, where is it? Elegant trim. I had it here. I'm gonna take my elegant trim and just tie a little loop. This is probably a little bit too much. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip this around. Let's trim this, these ends off, and then put it like so that we have a loop like that. And grab dimensionals. I am on the last edge pieces of my dimensionals. And I'm just gonna take it and kind of loosely put it through there and stick that down with a dimensional. All right, now let's add a bow. Let's see. Might wanna stick some adhesive. Do we have glue dots? Let's try that. A little bit of a glue dot just back here to hold everything in place. There we go. Now nothing will come loose. All right, this is my real red and gold dotted, dotted ribbon. Tie a bow. I don't want it to be too big. So let's adjust those. And then we'll use that mini glue dot again to put that right there. Beautiful. All right, now watch how beautiful it looks when you put it on a blueberry bushel card base. And we will use the rest of these dimensionals and put that right there. All right, now this is a dark card base and I didn't put a sentiment on the top, on the front. So I'm gonna take a piece of basic white and just stamp my sentiment on that and we'll adhere it to the inside of our card. Just like that. And there you go. All right, there's our first project. Beautiful. Now let's make one with the angel. All right, my second project is a little bag, a little gift bag, and we're gonna use Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock. I think that's a beautiful color combination. Um, let's make our box first. You're gonna need two pieces of Lost Lagoon. Let me grab mine. And they measure, I believe, let me double check myself, seven and by seven and a half. Now on the long side, you're gonna score it at two and five and a half, and then turn it and score the short side at two and six and a half. Now while you're here, take either a pencil or you can even do it with your um, um, stylus and make a little mark right there at the one inch mark, okay? So let's do that again, long side, two inches and five and a half, short side is two and six and a half, and make a little tick mark right there at the one. Now the reason we're making this tick mark is because we're gonna make some diagonal score lines here. This is where the box is gonna pinch. All right, so I'm gonna take a straight edge, like a ruler or your bone folder, and make um, a score line from there 
to there, from that tick mark down to the bottom two corners. Okay, here's one and another. All right, now it's really important to burnish your lines really well, okay? So get your bone folder and burnish all the lines. And those diagonal lines that we made, we need to really burnish them. I like to burnish them both ways. That gives that gives the cardstock, it breaks it down so that when you go to pinch in your sides, they really pinch in well. Also, I should have mentioned this, um, this score line right here, burnish it out, okay? Because when we put this box together, we're gonna kind of pinch things and we need that to pop out like that. So, and you know, that's another one where you can burnish it both ways, really to break down that cardstock and make assembling your box easy. All right, let's get these. This, this one on the inside is a little bit awkward because it doesn't go all the way down, <clears throat> but you can get it done. All right, the only thing that you need to cut out is this tab right here. Okay, cut that off. We're gonna, we're gonna adhere these like this, all right? So also cut this one out. And then just snip these lines right here. Okay, now grab whatever adhesive you prefer. I'm gonna use tear and tape today and run that along that long and skinny tab. Peel off your backing and then line it up over here like that. And repeat with the second one. Now this bag is large. I think you could fit any kind, uh, lots of gifts, in lots of kinds of gifts is what I'm trying to say. Homemade treats, but also jewelry, or socks, or something like that. Um, now see how that's gonna pinch in like that. And before I close this up, I always like to make sure everything is going where it's supposed to go. Cause sometimes this wants to buckle in, but I need it to go out. So make sure you kind of mess around with it and make sure that it's doing what you want it to do. All right, so let's fold in the back first. And I'm gonna use liquid glue down here and then the front flap last, okay? And there is your box. Now we're gonna make a decorative piece to go here on the front. So let's do that. We're saving our little tag for the end. Um, this is where you're going to stamp those stars from the stars at night. So use your embossing buddy really good and get your Versamark, get that. Um, star image and just start stamping your stars. And I just kind of, kind of doing them up and down at various heights. Um, it's really gonna be kind of like you're creating um, pattern paper. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I know some of you are gonna want it to be perfect and that's fine, but for something like this, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Do I don't have my tray here? All right, let's see if we can do this. This is clear embossing powder. And I'm gonna dump it all over and let's see if we can get it back in. All right, now you really can't see much. Can't really tell what's going on yet. Whoops. Okay, you know what? Let's do this because I am gonna use this paper here in a minute. All right, and then grab your heat tool. And this, these little reverse tweezers are gonna come in handy here. This, the reverse tweezers and the embossing buddy that I just used, as well as the tray that I was looking for. I think it's, oh, I see it now, it is here, it's buried. Um, and a little paintbrush come in our embossing accessories kit or maybe it's called embossing essentials kit. It's a great little kit to have 
It helps you really be successful with your embossing. It has all the things that you need. And these reverse tweezers. I have never had some of these before. I've never had a pair of these before. I know I'm late to the game. They are fantastic. All right, let's make sure we've got all that. Now let it set for just a minute. Um, you're also going to want to stamp the sentiment in Versamark on a skinny sliver of Pretty Peacock and emboss that with gold embossing powder. Now I'm going to take my Lost Lagoon ink and I'm going to do exactly what I did to the other project, except this time I'm going to really kind of go over the whole thing. This is going to make our Lost Lagoon piece darker than our bag. It's gonna make it a little more dramatic and it's gonna pop off a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Let me go around these edges just a little bit more. My ink pad doesn't seem to be too juicy. The juicier your ink pad, the less you're gonna have to do that. All right, now let's take this and put a little bit of adhesive across there and set that right there. Trim those edges to match. And then let's put it on our box. And the very last pieces of my dimensionals. And we're gonna put this right here on the front. All right, so let's set that aside and do our coloring now. Um, I have embossed the image already. This is These projects are quite a few steps, so I was trying to get some things done ahead of time for the sake of the video. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my light cherry cobbler and I'm gonna go around the edge. Again, this is gold um, embossing powder, stamped in Versamark on basic white. Now I really sat and thought about this angel, what colors she should be colored. And I decided to use wild wheat. Wild wheat is kind of a weird color. It's a great fall yellow, um, but it's a little bit weird. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit weird. When you look at it, you're like, how am I gonna use that? But funny enough, when you start using it, it actually looks golden. Look at that. One of my downline showed that to me and I was like, you are so right. So I thought, let's make her golden. So take just like we did with the other one, I'm gonna use my light um, wild wheat and I'm gonna um, flick some dark color on here. Now I'm not really doing a whole lot of different um, color, you know, in, on Santa, we alternated colors, but we're not gonna do that here. We're gonna just use gold for her gown, for her robe, whatever she's wearing. Flick that color down. What you can do, if you really want some variation, and we'll do that here, is we'll leave some of them without the dark. All right, and that will give you some variation. Another thing that you can do is to start the dark at a different location. So I start at the top there. So here, I'll start on the bottom and flick up. Okay, that way the dark sections are in different areas. All right, I think I'll just add a little bit of light to that one. All right, now I have to look at mine because it is a little bit tricky deciding what pieces are part of the angel and what pieces are the background. So it's okay to look it up online to see how other people have colored it. And then once you figure it out, it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Let's add some dark like that and like that. And how about like that? You don't want to color the whole thing light and then go back with the dark because the ink will dry and then it won't blend real well. So just do a few segments at a time. Gosh, this is just so beautiful. This would make beautiful Christmas cards.
Okay, so let's close up. And now we're gonna alternate between Lost Lagoon and I believe I have, let's see, what do I have? Pool Party. All right, so we'll do a pool party. Let's switch over. The, um, I tend to use the uh, brush or the um, bullet end 90% of the time, but when I'm trying to really kind of flip color on and fill, that brush tip really comes in handy. All right, we're gonna add dark pool party around the bottom like that. We'll come over here, be careful around her hand because we're gonna add some um, petal pink to her hand. Now, the more you use your brush tip, the uh, softer, that's the word I'm looking for, the softer it's going to get. And it's a little harder to be precise when it gets soft. But these are consumables. Eventually, you will have to replace them. Um, so don't be frustrated by that. I find that once my tip has started to break down, I find that my ink is also starting to run out, which means I have used it continuously and it's time to replace. Um, okay, Light Lost Lagoon. And Lost Lagoon, again, like Blueberry Bushel, is a dark color. Be careful around her wings. I'm leaving her wings white. Again, I opened up the bullet tip. So I think working in two sections at a time is good. There we go. Another thing you can do is instead of starting with your light, you can start with your dark and just add in a little bit of dark like that and then take your light and blend it up. It's just a matter of preference, I think. There's no wrong way or right way, I don't think. Okay, so we've got her done, except for her face and her hands. So add a little bit of petal pink or whatever color skin tone you want. Just, you know, that's a matter of preference too. And then take your two and a fourth inch circle punch and punch that out. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my hole punch and you know, I thought I had a bigger hole punch here. I guess not. And I'm going to punch, punch. And if you want it to be perfect back here, it's a little bit tricky. I'm gonna just eyeball it because I don't really care if it's perfect or not. Um, I don't think it matters too much, but you could always use your pencil to draw that mark in there. All right, now here comes the hard part. Let's see if I can get this threaded through. So front to back. Fill this with whatever your gift is. If you're gonna do a treat, like a homemade treat, put it in a cello bag first so that the food, you know, like the grease stain doesn't come through in your cardstock. All right, so tie this. This is our gold and silver 1 8 inch trim. See how that's popping in? You want those to pop out. So stick your finger in there and make them do what we told them to do. <laughs> it wants to take the easy way and cave in. All right, now last but not least, we're gonna tie this on also. We're gonna use that gold elegant trim. You know, these are so beautiful. I think these would make nice um, ornaments as well. You know, you can actually buy shrinky dink kits at the craft store. I think this would be a fun shrinky dink kit. It's gonna make it smaller, uh, but you could also do it on um, cardstock and laminate it, maybe on tile. I've seen people stamp on tile. I just These are just stunning images. Okay, so there's our box, but let's go one step further and add a few festive pearls. Isn't that just glorious? I think that the these stained glass images go really well too with our Stars at Night stamps. And I think the sentiment is, is the sentiment from Stars at Night or is it from, let me see, where's my stamp case? Ah, 
Oh, I've lost them. I'll have them listed on the supply list. Okay, there you go. You guys, today's projects are a little stepped up. Not, not super simple, but man, if you are in the mood to craft, to spend some time watching a movie and do some crafting, these are really, really rewarding projects. All right, don't forget to um, scroll to the bottom of the post, the second to last paragraph. There is a link for you to enter for today's door prize. So don't forget, okay? And I'll see you guys tomorrow with, what do we have? Jolly words tomorrow. All right, guys, see you later. Bye-bye.